When planning your trip, how do you find the best places to stay in New Zealand? In this video, I'll talk about your options for accommodation in New Zealand. I'll keep it interesting, not only focusing on classic motels and hotels, but include boutique hotels, luxury lodges, stylish bed and breakfast, farm stay places and cottage stays. So stay put, you will be amazed on the accommodation options we have available in New Zealand. Number one, the classic mainstream New Zealand hotels are like any other hotels around the world. They have 24 seven access to reception, access to services and often are centrally located. So you most likely understand what you will be getting. That is a plus, but also a minus for a rather special holiday trip. You want to have different experiences as such well as meeting the local people, immerse yourself into the local scene. Some hotels can be pricey for what they actually offer. What we tend to all resent is those added charges like early chicken, parking, in-room snacks, etc. My favorite hotel pick for the mainstream hotels is the QT Hotel in Auckland, which has a great location right at Viaduct Harbour. It has restaurant on site and a cool rooftop bar. It's a great place when you start your trip in Auckland. Number two, boutique hotels. When, it, when we talk about New Zealand boutique hotels, I'm referring to smaller places. So instead of having 500 rooms, maybe they have 50 rooms or even less. Generally speaking, they are often more personalized, service focused and have even greet you by name when you arrive. How nice is that? Cost-wise, they may be a little bit higher, but to be honest, on a special holiday when you enjoy those more personalized experiences, you may recall this for many years, so I think it's worth it. My current favorite boutique hotel pick is the Kings and Queens Hotel in New Plymouth. You just feel different when you just walk away. The staff is very attentive, that cares about you. At least it feels that way when you're staying there. Number three, New Zealand resorts and retreats are often located in the countryside. They are usually in a beautiful setting with amazing scenery. For family travelers, they are a great choice as facilities, activities and meal options are available right on site. Also, often retreat properties have larger spaces and multiple bedrooms, which is also good. The downside is a little bit that you live in your own bubble rather than linger with the locals. But that is fine because you can include a variety of accommodation options inside your travel itinerary. I do that all the time as a travel agent with my guests and it works really nice for an authentic travel experience in New Zealand. My current retreat recommendation is Mount Cook Lakeside Retreat near Mount Cook National Park. Sure, this one is a bit more costly, but for a once in a lifetime trip, it's absolutely worth it. Number four, luxury lodges in New Zealand are world-class properties with stunning locations and wonderful luxe facilities. They are mainly run by lodge managers and some international staff. A number of our guests have made the comments in the past that they miss the authentic local touch points in that sense that they want more access to the people with engaging deeper conversations. Don't get me wrong, those key lodges are important in the world of tourism, especially if you're into golfing or simply want the best of the best. They are wonderful. Breakfast, dinner and sometimes lunch is also included in those luxury lodges so you don't even have to leave the place after arrival. My current pick for the luxury lodge is Otahona, which is located outside Christchurch. The owners are often on site, which makes quite a difference and the staff are dedicated, caring locals. Number five. Boutique lodges and bed and breakfast stays in New Zealand are a wonderful way to combine stunning locations, local hosting and fabulous facilities. One of the key ingredients to the success of these lodges is that they are very often run and operated by the actual owners. So they really care and want to have a perfect experience for their guests. What I hear from my travelers all the time is the personal interaction they very much enjoy when staying at boutique lodges. Plus, they also appreciate the in-depth local knowledge and 
where to go and what to do and you know even the weather forecast so there's a lot of information they provide note lodges and bed and breakfast generally offering breakfast only but there's select a few which provide dinner at additional cost for the bed and breakfast and boutique lodge area i have a number I highly recommend. One of them is Mount Michael Lodge in Cromwell, stunning location, local owners, beautiful facilities. Another one is Mount Rosa, Queenstown, or Hylies Lodge in Tia. Now, just to name a few. So this time I've given you a few names more than recommended. As you see, those are the places that are really my favorites. Number six, farm stay in New Zealand. Visiting a farm stay accommodation in New Zealand is often a great desire for international travelers. However, hosting guests is not always possible for full-scale farming operations. It's just a matter of finding the right place with a great host and great rural environment. When all those factors come together, your overall holiday experience will be greatly enhanced. You will get to share their remote location, local stories, homemade food and made very well leave us rents. So a farm stay in New Zealand really provides a deeper level of travel experience. These days many of my guests are looking for this. My current farm stay picks is Cabot Lodge in Fjordland area. It's run by a local couple, you have first class accommodation and are able to go on a farm tour including a beekeeping session. How cool is that? Number seven, cottage stays are an excellent way to adding another level of local New Zealand experience. This could be a vineyard cottage or a farm cottage or simply a clamping setup, which has become more common in over the past few years. At the end of the day, with a cottage stay, you will get a more independent travel experience. Food provisions are often provided and meals are self-prepared. Privacy is a very important part of this experience. Some of them are in such remote locations that they are able to be totally walled by glass. These ones are called pure pots. So my current cottage picks, and there's a few as well. Again, it's Burn Cottage Retreat near Cromwell. It's Tasman Village Cottage uh, here in the Apple Tasman, Nelson region, and it's pure pots. They're all very in costs, but they are all great value for money. So my overall suggestions for accommodation options is to go for a mix in places to stay while traveling New Zealand. That way you get a deeper engagement with the local people, experience different locations, landscapes and styles. You might stay in an Auckland hotel room, then you move to a boutique hotel or bed and breakfast, followed by a farm stay place and then maybe a vineyard cottage. How does that sound? I think it's great. If you find this video helpful, hit the subscribe button below, thumbs up and stay up to connected for more helpful New Zealand travel tips. For any questions, please leave them in the comments field below and we see us in the next video.